Reporter, the consumer, and more. Jeff, it's great to have you here. You know, I think I want to start, first of all, with your outlook, because we're all trying to figure out what is happening with the consumer right here, right now, and what it could mean for the future. And it looks as if Macy's has confidence that you can handle the cost pressures coming your way, but you're less sure about how the consumer will react. What are you thinking and seeing right now, and how did that factor into the guidance? So what we're seeing now, Courtney, is that the consumer is healthy. And, and that's across all of the value um, when, you're, when you're looking at a customer basically who makes 75000 and below, 75 to 150 as well as 150 and above. All of them, the customer count is up, the customer spend is up. Uh, and so we expect that is what we're watching very carefully, particularly in the lower income customer. Um, what we clearly are seeing is a shift in categories that they're buying. They, they are really stalling on when you look at the kind of pandemic categories of casual, active, soft home. Those have really slowed and they've slowed markedly since the fourth quarter. Conversely, those kind of back to office, back to occasion, special occasion businesses, travel businesses are really hot right now. And those that trend line is up ten full points. So that serves us very well at Bloomingdale's and Macy's. Those are real categories where we sign or where we shine and we expect those to continue. So, you know, my team is looking at that very carefully, but there's also a lot of macro conditions out there that we're watching carefully. So we took a more conservative view when we look at the outlook. And uh, we, we, uh, when we look at it, we're expecting that our, our business is gonna be flat to up 1%, clearly different from what we did in the first quarter, but it's prudent based on all the economic uncertainty. And what about the way that you're able to foresee and then manage the cost of doing business, the cost of fuel and freight and wages? What do you anticipate there? Yeah, well, first of all, I would just say I'm very proud of my team and how they reacted. You know, we pivoted quickly. The Polaris strategy, which we have been on since February of 2020, has really per proved durable. And so that has really been the way that it's paved the way in our strategy about how we're reacting. So, you know, when you look at inventory, that's a great example of how the team pivoted. We clearly saw a slowdown in receipts that were coming in, and that was the opportunity for us to change what we did with on, on order. Uh, that started to come in differently. And now that we have more of that, that's starting to build. We now have great pricing signs to work through that. You know, we've clearly worked on those categories that have stalled and those categories that have ramped up. Um, when I looked at the cost base of making sure that, you know, we've spent years of delayering the organization, really increasing the spans of control, really pushing the empowerment to uh, those folks who really are facing the customer every day. And that is really helping us. So it's just a, quite an agile organization. We've been able to keep costs down. We've been able to really improve our balance sheet. We have now a cost structure that is, is really fit to be very agile wherever the customer is going. And we're ready to do that. You speak about the agility. What if consumer preferences change again in the next two or three months? How quickly can you shift that inventory, particularly as you're looking to plan for that all-important holiday season? Yeah, there's great signs there. First off, being a department store, we have the opportunity to shift across all of our categories. So the idea about a customer who isn't you know, high right now on casual and active, but they're very high on dresses and men's clothing, we can do that. We've got great relationships with, uh, with suppliers. And so whatever our needs are, we've been able to tap into that. So, you know, whatever the trends are, we can react to it. That said, Courtney, we are looking at kind of the same sort of supply chain delays that we had in 2021. We have moved up ship dates. We're not going to miss back to school. We're not going to miss holiday. You know, we're building that in. And, uh, and, you know, it's still uncertain on the supply chain side. 